This morning, we are diving back into the world of workers' compensation uh, with Injury Florida Law. Uh, Catherine Stone joining us once again this morning, always uh, with great reminders, great conversations, where I always learn a lot as well. Uh, this morning, this is interesting, though, Catherine. Uh, Catherine, good morning, by the way. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. We're talking about um, permanent uh, total disability, which I don't know if we've actually, you know, given that um, a whole lot of attention, probably because as we're getting ready to learn, I would imagine it is probably pretty rare to actually, you know, right. get that it is, status. It is one of the hardest benefits to qualify for under the workers' compensation system. Normally, um, you know, when I talk about different classifications from temporary benefits, which we see predominantly the most, um, the, the last um, qualification of status of benefits and through the workers' comp system is what we call permanent total disability benefits. So that means in order to qualify for that, that means that all of your doctors, uh, if you've had multiple doctors, maybe you only have one doctor, some clients have upwards of 10 doctors, all the doctors have determined that you're at maximum medical improvement, which means there's nothing they can do to improve your condition, but what the treatment they are providing is what we call palliative care, which means they're just going to keep you status quo. So they're just going to try to keep your pain at whatever level that they're able to, to maintain it at. Mm -hmm. um, but with that comes permanent restrictions, meaning the doctors will assign you can't lift, push, or carry more than 10 pounds um, on a permanent basis. And there's other restrictions that they could add into that. But in order to qualify for permanent total, those restrictions have to be so significant when combined with your vocational um, employment history and educational history that it precludes you from doing a sedentary sit down job within a 50 mile radius of your home. So as you can see, it's pretty restrictive um, and not a lot of people qualify for it because it is so restrictive. You're basically saying someone can't sit down and answer a phone or type on a computer, which there are individuals who do qualify for this benefit. Well, and I was just gonna ask, I mean, how often, you know, is that? A lot of times the elderly workforce, maybe um, depending on what type of vocational history they have or what type of jobs that they have done and, and educational background, let's say they were, you know, doing manual labor their whole lives and really have little to no computer skills um, they may qualify uh, individuals who don't speak English um, and have been permanently injured. Um, they oftentimes, because of that vocational element mm -hmm. and along with their lifting restrictions, they oftentimes can't um, return back to the workforce as well. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have less than a minute here, um, but again, this just goes to, you know, I think speaks volumes to the fact in making sure that if any kind of claim you have, it really is important to make sure that you do have an attorney that's kind of fighting on your behalf, because I can imagine this just gets completely overwhelming if you are sick and also not feeling well and then having to deal with this on top of it. Right. And, you know, it, it's a very large uh, classification and um, sometimes, you know, it's a fight to get those benefits and we have to hire experts to get involved on our behalf or our client's behalf. Yeah. Well, there is the website we've been showing uh, the number to call, whether it's something about this or anything else. Workers' compensation is certainly your area of expertise. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's always so good to see you. We appreciate you. your time. We know how busy you are.